Is it okay for Christians to drink? Let's talk about it. You know, one of the biggest problems in the world today is the problem of alcoholism and the devastation that al alcohol can, you know, wreak upon people's lives. Broken marriages, broken homes, lives shattered, people dead, alcohol poisoning, all kinds of stuff. Alcohol can be a truly deadly and very dangerous drug. So let's not go lightly. Let's not speak lightly about alcohol. In Romans chapter 14, the Apostle Paul makes it very clear that if you really love your brother, you won't do anything to cause him to stumble. There are many people out there, Christians, who used to be drunkards, and they cannot pick up a bottle of beer. They cannot drink or, you know, just sit down with a glass of wine. They have a weakness in that area. And, you know, a lot of them admit it. You know, Alcoholics Anonymous is all about admitting you're an alcoholic and admitting, admitting your weakness and, and facing it and, and embracing your weakness. And that's, that's, that's powerful. So we have weaknesses in people. And whether or not drinking alcohol is acceptable by God is not the question. The question is whether or not ha having a beer or wine is causing your, your brother to stumble. I mean, a lot of these Christians, a lot of Christians that have come from a you know, background where they used to be drunkards, they have given up or they have been delivered from the, the demon of alcoholism. And they cannot sit and they cannot ha just have one beer. They cannot just have one glass of wine. It's a weakness. They, they, they would fall right headlong in that same old pit. So they know their limits. Their limits are zero tolerance to alcohol. And so for us to love these people, for us to love our brothers, we need to join them in saying no to alcohol. Now, I know a lot of people that say, well, you know, Jesus, wasn't Jesus a wine-bibber? No, he was not a wine-bibber. And people get this idea that Jesus drank wine or was a wine-bibber, you know, from a, a verse here, a verse there, where, you know, where it says that Jesus was accused of being a wine-bibber. Wine now, you got to think about it for a minute. The term wine-bibber, the name wine bibber, the label wine bibber or drunkard was given to Jesus, was tacked on Jesus by his enemies. Are you going to join the enemies of the Messiah? Are you going to join the enemies of the Lord in calling him a wine bibber? Are you going to join the enemies of the Lord in calling him a drunkard or saying that he drinks? I tell you the truth, there is not one verse not one verse in the scriptures that, that proves that he even drank grape juice, let alone alcoholic grape juice, or as we say today, wine. There's not one verse that proves that. Not one verse. Yes, the apostles drank the fruit of the vine, you know, the last supper they call it, but Jesus did not. Jesus refused to touch the grape juice or the fruit of the vine, or as some people would call it, the wine. Why did he refuse it? Now, we know historically and historical documents uh, from people who lived in that era, people who have claimed to have you know, seen, actually, actually seen the Lord in the flesh, said that he had long hair. The only time in the scriptures where, where Jesus really did have wine in his hands, so to speak, or grape juice in his hands, was in the Last Supper, and he refused to drink it. 
Now, according to the, the book of Numbers, uh, there's a vow which they call the Nazarite vow. Uh, everybody who wants to really be extra holy um, is to take this vow. The word Nazarite actually means to be holy, a holy person, okay? Now, why wouldn't Jesus take the Nazarite vow? I believe he did. I believe he was under the Nazarite vow. I mean, Samson was, John the Baptist was. Why not Jesus? I mean, he was a holy person. Now, I know that Jesus being from Nazareth doesn't really make you a Nazarite, so to speak. But why wouldn't Jesus take the Nazarite vow? I mean, he fulfills the scripture, doesn't he? He obeys all of the commandments, doesn't he? Why wouldn't he just take the extra step of holiness and, and, and take the Nazarite vow? I believe he did. And part of the Nazarite vow is, you know, to grow your hair and not to touch grape juice or any part of the grape. Like I said, there's no evidence whatsoever that Jesus drank wine or even grape juice for that matter. Now, I just want to make it very clear. In the original Greek, in the original manuscripts, there is no difference between the word that's used for grape juice and the word that's used for alcoholic wine. It's both the same word. So the only difference in scriptures between grape juice as we know it today and wine as we know it today is, is the age of it. In those days, they didn't have refrigeration or anything to keep things from going bad or that kind of thing, right? They, they just uh, they had new wine, they had old wine. You know, old wine was, was the fermented stuff. New wine was like what, would, what we would call grape juice today. So when you read about wine in the scriptures, as Paul said to Timothy, use a little bit of wine for your stomach, it didn't necessarily mean alcoholic wine, okay? It could have meant grape juice. You got to take it, you got to look at it in context. So when Jesus had the wine for the Last Supper, it could have been, you know, it could have been just grape juice. Why not? It could have been just fresh grape juice. Freshly squeezed grape juice. Why not? So we have no proof that Jesus actually drank wine. Now I know some of you said, well, Jesus turned the water into wine. Yeah, so? So what? He didn't drink it. He didn't ask his followers to drink it or, or his parents to drink it or anybody to drink it. He made it, he turned water into wine and he let them drink it. Who's them? Well, it could have been anybody. You know, it says in the Bible, give, give beer to those who are perishing. You know, if you're perishing, if you're on your way to hell, if you have no hope, then bread, then drink up. Give beer to those who are perishing, it says. It says, wine is a mocker and beer is a brawler. It doesn't, doesn't have much good to say about wine or beer in the scriptures. Jesus turned water into wine. Yes, he did. That doesn't prove anything. That just proves that, uh, I mean, he turned water into wine. Um, it doesn't prove anything. So we have nothing to prove that Jesus actually drank. We do have scriptures that prove that the apostles drank the fruit of the vine. The question is whether or not it was alcoholic fruit of the vine. But today we have grape juice and we have alcoholic wine. And so we must ask the question, is it okay to drink alcoholic wine? And this brings us right back full circle to the, to the whole concept of Romans chapter 14. Paul says, don't eat or drink anything that causes another person to stumble. If, if, if you got, you know, a, a highly rep, reputable Christian, if you got a preacher that sits back with a, with a, bottle of beer after service downstairs in the basement all the time with the rest of his cronies. What does that say to the people who are recovering alcoholics? <laughs> does no good whatsoever. That just really encourages them, encourages them to fall back into the sin of alcoholism and, and drunkenness. And we know in the scriptures very clearly, Paul made it very clear, the apostle Paul made it very clear that drunkenness leads to hell. Hell, I say. 
eternal torment and dom damnation. So this is not something to take lightly. So I think it's very clear. The answer is Christians should not drink any kind of alcoholic beverages at all. So therefore, you could, I mean, you could tell people as a Christian, as a preacher, as a minister, as a leader in the church, as a leader in society, you can tell people, I don't drink. I just don't drink. I don't believe in it. And your example can help a lot of other people overcome the demon of alcohol. Don't fall into this whole thing, well, it's okay to have some drinks here now and then. Don't fall into that. If you don't fall into alcohol, alcoholism, if you don't fall into drunkenness and practicing drunkenness, if you don't fall into it, other people can fall into it. You can cause other people to fall into it. Don't be a vessel through which sin comes. You don't want to be held responsible for the sin of other people. You don't want to be responsible for the souls of people who go to hell. Don't drink.